Hey, y'all. Um, I saw a request out there to, to talk a little bit about turning operators, and I thought this would be a fun topic for me to kind of dive into because um, somehow I missed the boat on turnary operators when I was a student. And so um, I've kind of come to appreciate them only through seeing them used in other places. So I thought it'd be a good uh, exercise for me to understand it more, look at documentation, um, practice using it, try to talk about it. One of the really interesting insights that has developed in my teaching career is that trying to explain something is far and away the best way to start to cement your understanding and appreciation of it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to share my main desktop here. I've got some got some JavaScript here. I don't know if I'm going to use this file. Uh, I mean, a lot of times when I'm doing when I'm doing work. I will, in JavaScript, I'll just use a browser and inspect and have a little JavaScript sandbox over here. But I'm thinking this might be kind of challenging because um, I'm going to write multi-line code and writing multi-line code in the console is kind of annoying. But let's start with the basic, um, the basic structure of a conditional. And I guess I'll just do a new file here called conditional.js. So one of the pieces of advice that I often give students when they're writing conditionals in context is to write the structure of the conditional first. And that's different in any language, but in JavaScript, if you're writing it, if else, the structure looks like this, right? And then this one is what I will do if the condition is met. True, truthy. And then this is the branch that gets executed if the condition is not met. False or falsy. So, you know, from a very basic standpoint, I just, in the console, I declared a, um, a variable called num and I assigned it to the value five. And so um, if I write a, statement that says if num console log howdy else console log that was falsy false falsy uh exclamation point um now if i copy and paste this into my console it should be able to evaluate this as syntactically correct JavaScript code, right? Because I wrote all of my symbols correctly. Um, I've just got some console logs. So I'm either going to see howdy or I'm going to see that was false falsy. And I'll be able to see essentially whether five is truthy or falsy. And five is um, truthy because all numbers are truthy except for zero. So if I say... Now I say num equals zero, which I'm allowed to do because I'm reassigning the value of num, but I declared it as a let, so that's good. So if I do this little bit of code again, now I should be getting the other result, which is that was false, falsy. So this is the basic, basic if else structure. And a ternary um, is a way to kind of write it into a single line of code, which can be very nice. So I'm just going to do a quick documentation search, ternary operator JavaScript, and here's the MDN docs. Okay, so I've got is member, question mark, and then I've got the string or this string. And so interpreting this, I'm returning this value or this value, depending on how this gets evaluated, okay? Now, from my perspective, uh, the way I wrote my little logic, all I was doing is console logging. And so it may be challenging to kind of make it work. But basically, if we think about the way I wrote this, I'm going to just Anytime I look at documentation that I'm trying to make sense of, I'll go back to copying it and sort of commenting it out. So 
let, let's think about this. This is member is essentially the condition, right? So in a way I have this condition, question mark, and then true response, and then the false response. And um, what's, what's challenging about this, I, I'm, as I'm thinking about it, is that if I write, let, let's just try to write num question mark and then my console logs here and here and, and just see if it likes that syntax or not, right? So basically I'm going back to my, oh shoot, where'd my console go? I don't know, maybe I lost it. Okay, so we say let num equals five and now I'm gonna try to write a ternary. Num question mark, console log, howdy, and then colon console log num was false e pictures in the way here oh and then close parenthesis okay so let's just see if it will deal with this syntax no same thing so basically i took this line of code one simple line and i replaced you know five lines of code so you can see the kind of match between these things i've got my condition here this is asking is it true or false this is what i do in the case that it's true and this is what i do in the case that it's false if it's multi-line code the ternary is not a good option because then, uh, you know, how do I write multi-line code inside the context of this little space that's to the right of the question mark and to the left of the colon? But if all you're doing is kind of a one-liner, then maybe this is the right thing to do. And I'm not saying you can't do multi-line code in a ternary operator. I actually don't know for sure the answer to that question. But the whole point of a ternary is if there's a simple switch between based on this condition, I'm either going to do X or Y then a ternary is a very nice way to, to do that. So I hope that was helpful in kind of thinking about how ternary operators connect to if and else. I think if and else is the place to start because you want to be able to deal with basic conditional questions in code. That happens all the time. Um, if you want an example here, I was just doing this live coding and you can see this video uh, in my channel, but we were, I was working on this live coding example out of phase one. And, you know, I had to decide on whether the ID of the particular element was equal to 001. That was my way of knowing if it was January or not. Now I've got multi-line code here. So it may be that, you know, I can't really consolidate this down to a ternary function. Um, but then here's another conditional here. Um, and again, this, this, but I could abstract things a little bit. So maybe, you know, there's, there's a way to like write a function and then this function gets invoked if I do this. And then this function gets invoked if the other thing is true. So, you know, ternaries can be just a nice organizational tool to redo if else statements. And, and I can go more in depth on that in another uh, video if wanted to like refactor this so let me know all right